All right, what's up, my friend? Hey, I'm Ryan Coral. Welcome to the Grow Your Video Business Show. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Core Group and Storyblocks. Uh, I just recorded this whole intro and <laughs> realized that the mic was uh, right there, but like I have some stuff on my screen that I couldn't see the mic, so I did the whole intro with uh, you know shotgun in the in the shot. So that was pretty awesome. Uh, <laughs> Anyway, this show, I, my intention with this show is to help you in your video business. If you're starting a video business, if you're wanting to grow or scale your video business, I've been there. I've been doing this work for 17 years and I've done a lot of things. I've done a lot of things wrong. I've done plenty of things right. And here I am still a video business owner, a video business owner, and I want to help you. I bring on guests that are, you know, video, other videographers who are doing this work. I bring on experts, marketing, sales, uh, business experts, authors, speakers, motivational people to help fire you up, to help you uh, to do this work, to do it better, uh, to be a better human in the process, to be a good boss, all, all of those things. So I'm super glad that you're here. In this episode, I interviewed Jessica Phillips and we talk about a whole bunch of things. She is a marketing whiz and she brings the house down, literally brings the house down in this episode. In today's episode, she talks about the number one reason why customers might be choosing you and you wanna know this. Uh, we also talk about the dangers of bullhorn marketing. Are you a bullhorn marketer? And if so, you need not be that, okay? Uh, we also talk about, or really Jessica talks about this. I talk around it after she introduces the idea, how to outcare the competition. I love this line of thinking. And then also the idea of reducing friction in your process and how to add the light, even in small ways that make a huge impact for your clients. The other thing I wanted to say was, I hope you are an action taker. If you're not an action taker, I hope today you say, you know what, I wanna be an action taker. I like this action taker thing that Ryan's talking about. I want you to, to listen to these episodes and I want you just to take, if there's just one thing that you walk away with, maybe it's like, I don't ever wanna listen to that show, show again, then awesome, don't ever listen to it again. But if there's something that can help you in your video business, I want you to just apply one thing. And maybe it's just an idea that you get inspired by that's not really related to what we're talking about. I think that's great too. But my hope for you is that after the show or during the show, you would just think like, I should try that. I should try that in my business. And if it doesn't work, no big deal. This whole thing is an experiment. This whole thing called life is an experiment. And you only find out if stuff works or doesn't if you try it. So my encouragement uh, to you is that you would try something, that you would just take one thing from this episode or any of the other episodes that you listen to and you would apply it in your life, in your business, okay? With that, uh, let's jump into this episode. If there was one thing that could have ended my business 17 years ago, it would be because of the numbers. I hate accounting, taxes. W9s, W2s, W40s, spreadsheets, all of that stuff. And I hate it mostly because I'm honestly, I'm afraid of it. I'm just not great with numbers. If this sounds familiar or if you're so new in your business that it's not even on your radar yet, you need Core Group. Core Group can help you create financial systems and tax strategies that you need so you can grow profitably. And they've been doing this for over 20 years. They become an extension of your team so that you can stay in your lane of expertise and then lean on them to help guide you along the way. For me, having a team of experts in my corner to help keep track of our books and a just to make sure that we're budgeting for taxes appropriately, to have an actual strategy for our taxes and our accounting is priceless. And it allows me to sleep easier at night knowing that I don't have to be an expert in that arena. If you wanna avoid surprises in your video business, and you want experienced help building a plan for the future that you want, both professionally and personally, head over to studiosherpas.com slash core for more information. And when you're ready to set up a free consult with them, make sure to mention Studio Sherpas for a special discount too. Got your back. Get more out of your accountant. Go to studiosherpas.com slash core. What's up, friends? Hey, welcome to this episode of the show. My guest today is Jessica Phillips, who is the founder of Now Marketing Group. Jessica, welcome <laughs> to the show. Thank you so much for being here. Hey, Ryan. Thanks so much for having me. It's already been a lot of laughs, and we're just getting started. So 
It's going to be great. <laughs> I'm going to make sure that the outtake of me botching the intro doesn't make the final cut. So that just, just going to put that out there. Jessica has quite the resume. Um, let's see, top 12 global rising stars on social media to watch in women-owned businesses of the year of 2018. I mean, come on, 2018, that must have been a huge year for you. Yeah, well, you know, you just make up your own awards and then like give them to yourself. That's really what it is. <laughs> and then you can put it on your bio. You know, no, it's been it's been a great ride. Uh, just celebrated 11 years in business, and it feels like yesterday, but also mm. a lifetime. Like you don't remember what yeah. you did before it. You know, I'm sure right. anyone that started a business can relate. <laughs> That's amazing. Congratulations. 11 years, you know, yeah. running any business is ama an amazing accomplishment. Uh, tell me, what is the thing in, in the work that you do? Like, what's the one thing that if, if there was something that just made you come alive? I mean, doing this for 11 years, hopefully there is still something that, you know, you get super excited about. What, what would that one thing be for you? Yeah, I feel like I'm honestly like just getting started. I still am like mm. in that passion zone. And I like to say like my personal mission is to help inspire others to love more, give more and be more through the art of authentic relating and mm. making like relationships the forefront of business and marketing. So my MO is just all related to relationship marketing and just being better humans and, and not having like this separation of business and personal, right? Um, to in how we show up and just being more relatable, having fun uh, in business and making money along the way. <laughs> having fun and making money, those are two of my favorite things. <laughs> my definitely. Uh, yeah. Making an impact. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That yeah. That too. Mm -hmm. What for you, like where does that where does that drive or where does that inspiration like the way to like build a business like that, that's, that's kind of different the way that you talk about it. Um, those things, uh, I, I feel like a lot of companies say like, you know, those are our core values and those are, those things are important to us, but to actually like, that's the driving force of, yeah, I had asked you before we started, I was like, so, you, you know, like social media is kind of like, you're, you're like, eh, no, no, it's more like, you know, this, I care about, you know, people relationship, you know, it's, so where, where does that, where did that come from? Yeah. And it's like, I've heard the core value thing and, you know, our mission statement and all that. And a lot of it's surface level stuff when you hear mm -hmm. that from companies. And this is more that thing that's harder to articulate because you, it's your driving force. It's your, you know, your North star. I like to call it like the brand manifesto. And before starting now marketing group, I actually worked in corporate America, mm -hmm. uh, worked in telecommunications, was going to school, you know, doing the, the blueprint for how to do life. Right. Um, and <laughs> thought I had my forever job working with small business owners, um, and helping them to market their businesses and sell along the way and ended up getting really sick. Um, when I had my my daughter, um, I was in the hospital for eight out of the nine months that I was pregnant and ended up, I was top sales rep, all the things like throughout my career was really work is like something I love doing. But when I got sick and was unable to work, I just seen like how a company could treat someone, um, during that time. So like they fulfilled my position with someone else, um, kind of let me go. <laughs> I was on my own at that time. And it was like this, the worst thing that could have happened at the time, but the best thing that could have happened at yeah. the time, because it, gave me the clarity and that mental uh, pause to look at what I really enjoyed doing and the things that I would never tolerate again, like, you know, that, that bureaucracy and how people were being treated and you're only as good as your numbers and, and when you're feeling well and, you know, feeling guilty for taking time off. Right. Um, and so I just took the things I love doing and, and wanted to start a business and a mission to really get people to think different about business and how much more creative, and how much more of an impact as well as revenue that we could make if we just thought about business differently and how really this ties into to marketing sales all of it's all really intertwined to just human behavior and the sense of belonging so that's where I, I got started in, in 2010, then kind of paying to work, you know, when you start your own business. Um, but when you're, when you're on a mission, it's like, that's all you can see is, is the, the goal in front of you. I love that. It's not, I'm not surprised at all that you have been in business for 11 years. And I'm sure they, there have been plenty of like, you know, tough times, hard times, up and ups and oh, downs sure. and all that stuff. But with the, the way that you are building your business, uh, I mean, you're the kind of person that a lot of businesses wish more businesses were like. 
I think it's starting to open up that way, honestly. If yeah. we look at anything good that came out of 2020, if we look at kind of that silver lining, I feel that many brands' eyes were opened to how flexible we can be and still do business, right? How human that we really all are at the end of the day. When your boss has to sit in their home and work and has their dog come up or, you know, dealing with their kids not being able to be in school and everybody's on this level playing field, there becomes this humanity element to, hey, this is how we need to show up. And by the way, are the people that are going to stay loyal to us are the ones that have something more than just surface level, you know, uh, you know, commitment to that brand or um, to to who they are choosing to work with, whether that's team members and your team staying with you when they realize, you know what, now it's a good pause moment. Now I do have some clarity because <laughs> I'm out of that grind to now choose where I want to work, but also the customers at the end of the day, because now they're going to go with and only stay with the people that they're most loyal to and who they yeah. feel connected to and that they want to support. So I feel like 2020 taught everyone a huge lesson um, in that it has to be at the core of who we are, the, the brand, the brand personality, and then it has to start from the inside out if we want to, growing our, want to grow our business. And that's the only way for sustainable long-term growth. Mm, I love that. That's really good. What about like... Um, I'm still trying to, I'm trying to wrap my head around, like for, for your own inspiration, like who do you look up to or like, what's your favorite author, book, podcast? Like what, where are you, where are you finding the stuff that, that is fueling you to keep doing this work? Oh my gosh. I read a lot and actually uh, challenged my team. We have a monthly challenge called level up, level up challenge, uh, where they get rewarded for reading. Um, so there's like just a slew of just different personal development as well as marketing, business, you know, all the books that they can um, tap into and then they get rewarded for reading it and completing it um, at the end of the month. So I would say, oh, there's so many. Seth Godin's probably my favorite marketer and like business yeah. mind. I really love like his stuff and just the way he looks at business and marketing. Like I, I really get energized by his brain, if you will. Mm -hmm. Um, yes. as far as like personal development wise, there's so many, I mean, I love like the alchemist. Um, of course that's like a classic, uh, how to win friends and influence people. I feel like is the golden child book for all things, um, business and, and marketing and just everybody should read that book. Um, so yeah, but, and I just, yeah, I'm always trying to consume something. Um, but I would say those are probably my favorite go-tos. That's good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I resonate. Seth Godin, man, that guy is really good. Uh, right. She's on a different right? planet. I'm just like, yes, I know. Yeah, it's I so funny. My, my family first... laughs, at, laughs at me because like they'll mention like, you know, celebrities or whatever, and they get excited about that. And then you and mention like, like, I'm like Seth Godin or whatever. Yeah. Who just, you know, he is a celebrity. Yeah. Right. Like I am like, I get excited about people's brains. I, mean, I got I emailed <laughs> by a celebrity. I send it, I sent him an email in like 2010 or something like that and asked him this question and he, like literally within an hour, I don't know. I feel like it was maybe even minutes. He, he did. He emailed back. It was a one sentence, very short. And I was like, oh my gosh. And then I saw him at a conference a couple of years ago. And I was like, uh, I got to ask a question. I was like, you actually answered an email of mine like 10 years ago. I, fi I found it. It's right here. Thank you for doing that. That was so cool. It's and, actually you know, everybody else there. They're all, here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Right. But all the marketers are like, oh my gosh, that is amazing. Uh -huh. Right. <laughs> Yeah. What what would you say like in your business? What what what's one of the best things that you have done to build your business? Yeah, I think this is something that not only I've done that anyone can do is really just how we think about business in general and marketing. I feel like so much goes into when we get started to to build a business that so much stress, anxiety, you know, just all the things we feel like we have to keep doing more and more and more and yeah. adding more tools on or, you know, more time that we're spending. And if we're feeling like we're in this rut, you know, and, and continuing just to rinse, repeat and add more things on that we really need to pause first and really only think about what's at the core, like I said, starting from the inside out of business. And I like to think about it this way. So truly just to out care and care is an acronym the competition is how we can show up. Because if we think about the number one reason and, and how our number one reason that our customers are choosing us and the way that they are choosing to do business with us is all about one, who they think is going to give them the biggest 
and best experience. And experience is that verb. So how we're making our customers feel at the end of the day. And, and so each customer, when they're on this journey of hiring someone, 90% of that, 90% of the time they're starting online on Google and searching out like, who can I hire for a videographer, right? And they're asking their network. Um, and so the first part of care is all about capturing attention. Like how do you capture that attention and stand out amongst a sea of samesies? And the only way of doing that first is if we truly know like what makes our brand unique. You know, it doesn't matter what niche of a business you're in, even if you're in like just videography, right? Like you still can do something that's different. It's not about what you do, but it's like the how you're doing that thing mm. that makes you stand out. So when we're thinking about that and at the core of who we are, starting from the inside out, it's like identifying what is our brand manifesto? What is our, and the brand manifesto when I, um, is a lot different than like a tagline or a mission statement. When I said like those things are very surface level, they kind of are, right? Like, it, not that they're bad, but it's the thing that you're just talking about your company and just talking about you. Like, here's what we believe, right? But a brand manifesto is like, here's what we're here to do and here's who we're here to do it for. So, like, if you've never heard, like, the term manifesto before, I, I highly encourage, like, just Google it. You'll see some amazing ones by Apple and Levi's and Whole Foods and and you can, when you read it, it makes you feel something, right? And that's where that kind of starts from then when you're thinking about experience that you're providing, it's like, here's what we're really here to do. Here's what we get excited about. And here's how we're going to help you. And that's really how you start capturing attention because you know, here's what we're here to do. And here's who we're here to do it for. Like really defining, I'm here to serve this type of audience and this type of community and look at, okay, here's the people that then I can surround myself with, whether I'm starting to grow a team, that it's more than just adding someone on that knows how to do a task, right? Like it's somebody that aligns with that manifesto that you bring in into your team because that passion that comes out when you're creating your art should be felt. It shouldn't feel like a, a work task, right? And so that's good. It's going to, going to be what makes you stand out to capture that attention. And then the A part of care is like articulating your message, then building relationships, is the R and E is exceptional experience. And when you can focus in on those things, which I have like this process uh, in a workbook I can give to the audience at the end that walks them through it, yeah. um, if they want to build it for themselves, um, then it helps you then align, okay, here's where I need to show up. Here's who, who I'm here to do it for. Now I know exactly what kinds of content to create because here's what I believe and here's who I'm trying to create it for and I know where they're hanging out. and. Now I know what makes me stand out and my value shows up so much more so you can actually charge what you're worth instead of trying to, as Seth Godin would say, <laughs> lower your price and it's a race to the bottom, right? Mm. Um, so, so focusing on care and how to out care the competition is really at the core of how I've grown my business and how I help clients do the same. You could probably just end the episode. Long, long-winded long answer. I'm sorry. <laughs> so good. No, I mean, it's really good. Um, man, there's a lot in there. Um, where do we go? Out care the competition. I love that. Um, our video company, our, one of our taglines is, uh, you know, or, or when I'm introducing myself, it's like, oh, and I just joined the chamber, local chamber of commerce here. And, um, you know, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm Ryan Coral. And, you know, I help companies create marketing videos with soul. Oh, I and love that. And I'm, I'm on a, I'm on a zoom call and I saw, I saw a couple of people kind of like, they like tilt their head and they're like, ah, oh. and, and I had a couple of people reach out and I haven't, you know, we came up with that tag, like shortly before, you know, everything, you know, kind of changed. And so I haven't, you know, met a ton of people and been able to use that in a, in a sentence as I introduce myself. But it's very interesting because what I'm trying to do is connect with, you know, very similar to mm -hmm. your approach, which I think is why I'm like appreciating so much of what you're saying is there's a lot of alignment here. Um, but people get it. Like we're, you know, we create video soul. We we're trying to create, get to the heart and soul of who you are as a business, you know, mm -hmm. so that we can help you connect with the people that connect with your messaging, mm -hmm. you know, that is so good. I, the, I mean, the, the, the sooner <laughs> we're just speaking the same language here. So whatever, everybody that's listening, just don't mind. Just we're going to have some gonna... woo woo time here. You yeah, that's right. To that's join right. In. But here's the powerful thing that you just said when you said that, right? Like people reached out and that's the key because when you show up in your true authentic, 
yourself, right? It's then you have this magnet versus bullhorn approach to business and, and marketing. Mm -hmm. The magnet that's going to draw the right people in, they're, they're going to stick with you because they're your people. And yeah. instead yep. of feeling like you have to just bullhorn a message out and, and shout it yep. out to get people to listen to you. And I'm a huge fan of acronyms. I want to give you one more because it's so it's about video. And that's the Ooh. key when you're talking about creating video too. It's always like, what's going to make somebody watch? watch the video, right? So in, in when you get to the core of what really makes a great video, it's understanding what purpose, like for what purpose are you creating the video, right? And in knowing like, um, you know, who, who you're creating it for, right? And then going through and, and thinking through now that we know what purpose it, that we're creating this, like who's going to be our community, and I call them the activators, that is really going to be inspired by this and take action on that video or want to share it out. Uh, you know, what is going to be our our style of the video and and how are we showing up um, at the end with like humanity, right? And, and making sure that it's made specifically for a person that's going to want to take action. So um, that's included at the, uh, the end too. I'll give you the workbook on and building that out if you, if you want it. But that's really at the center of all great content is the content that makes you feel like it's meant for you, right? Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. At the end of the day. And that's what people stick with. And that's what then they become activators for the brand because they want to keep coming back again and again and sharing the content, engaging with it and insisting that other people take action on that content too, whether it's just like, oh, you got to check this person out or this video is so cool. Um, and, and that's how you can grow your business organically too, versus like the pay to play model. Because once you find your right followers that are truly connecting with you, then they turn into your biggest fans, right? And there's yep. a big difference when you're showing up with the right content. And then your clients finding that that difference when you're adding a little bit more of who you really are into it to turn to your biggest advocates, you know, and team members into evangelists in your community and to collaborators. Like there's a big shift that happens when you get more aligned with who you truly are at your core. Back when I started my video company, stock footage, it used to be the worst. It was terrible, terrible quality, super cheesy shots and really small selection. And it was really expensive. That is not the case with Storyblocks. They offer affordable subscription plans to their enormous library of stock footage. And with their unlimited access plan, you get access to the whole library, including HD and 4K footage. They've got After Effects and Premiere Pro templates, music, images, sound effects, and more. Seriously, there is tons. There have been so many projects where our team just needed one extra shot you know, maybe the day after the shoot, the client was like, hey, this would have been a great thing to get. And we're like, ah. or in post-production, they're like, hey, you know, it'd be a really cool shot. We've saved our clients and ourselves a ton of money and headaches and heartaches. And we've saved a couple of projects that just needed that one special shot with our Storyblocks subscription. Head over to storyblocks.com slash studio Sherpas to help you create more video with their affordable subscriptions. I, I remember when I first started my video business, I, you know, I didn't do sales. I didn't do marketing or anything before. And I thought that I had to be a bullhorn, mm -hmm. right? I just thought I had to be lo as loud as I could reach as many people as I could. And out of all of the people, some of them would become clients and what, I mean, exactly what you said. It's like, if I, if I can really know who I am, know what makes me come alive, what kind of clients, what kind of work, and I can articulate that. And I, and I don't need to hide behind, uh, you know, a big studio name or, you know, don't, don't put so many, so many video videographers don't put their picture on their site because it's just them. And they're afraid that they're not going to be able to work with an agency or a big corporation mm -hmm. because the corporation is going to say like, oh, they're a one person shop. Like, uh, we don't work with one person shops. And, 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 you know, for whatever slew of reasons, but th there's just the, there are these fears, these things that we think mm -hmm. that, well, if they really know me, if they know that I, you know, talk, I can talk like Yoda or they, they know that I really care about my family and mm -hmm. not so much about business, then they're not going to want to work with me. It's like, mm -hmm. no, the, the right, the people that you want to work with mm -hmm. want to know those things. Right. Exactly. And the quicker you can put yourself out there, that's that's why social media can be such a gift because you can be mm -hmm. your and I'm raising my hand here, your your complete yeah. goofy self and 
you know who's going to hire me is the people that can put up with my annoying dad jokes and that you know will actually ask me hey can you do the yoda voice because uh, <laughs> i kind of want to see you be awkward for a second and they appreciate that mm-hmm. right that those are those are my people yeah. but the people that are like uh that's too i can't believe that you're it's like oh i don't want to work with you this, <laughs> this is not going to be fun and we're going to get to a situation where i'm going to you know make a sarcastic remark or inappropriate joke and you're going to get super offended and i'm like oh man sorry i thought wrong tough crowd wrong crowd <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, the sooner you can put mm-hmm. your true self out there and, and really let y- your brand be a reflection of you at, at, and I say at some level, but at some mm-hmm. pretty decent levels, the quicker you're going to weed out the people that aren't good fits and the quicker you're, you're really going to be able to draw the people that you want to be working with and that want to work with you. Absolutely. You just nailed it. And and that's the lie that we've been told in business is that we have to work with everyone. And especially it's really hard when you're starting a business uh, when you need money and you want to take on those people, right? Uh, And that we have to blast our message out there. And those are like the two biggest lies because what it does is put us in this adding culture debt uh, on instead of culture credit because what we just said, people are going to talk about the experience that they have. They're going to support the brands that they, you know, care about and the ones that are really, um, doing that extra thing for them. It's not just a transactional, you know, I'm creating a video for you for this amount of money and that's it. Nobody gets excited about that. But when you have that extra level of value in where there's this, you know, you've helped them do something more, um, where it's not just you creating a video, like anybody can create a video. You can go on Fiverr, right? right? And and have somebody do a video for you. They don't even have to, you know, meet with you. You know, it's what is the thing that's going to make you stand out? What is going to be that differentiator to where you're adding culture credit? Because when you take on the wrong clients, and I was guilty of this at the beginning too, you know, taking on some people that I'm like, okay, well, maybe I can help them. And it's never going to work out. You're going to end up spending way more energy, way more time for a lot less money because they don't value you, uh, because they don't, they're not aligned. Um, and so you add this culture debt on that then now you have to do 10 times more culture credit to kind of make up for that. So when you can say no to the wrong people, if they do come knock on your door and refer them to someone else that may be a better fit, there's so much work out there for everyone. There's definitely enough work. Um, even if you are one person shop, I mean, we've only had one videographer the whole time, um, at now marketing group. And we, you know, do quite a bit of videos every year and same thing, you know, don't have a sales team or any of that. Just show up with your art and people will be attracted to it. And the people will become your marketing army that are attracted to it, that it is the right fit for. So it's growing in this flywheel effect uh, where it's just getting more and more momentum as the more you keep showing up authentically versus the sales funnel where it's just dropping out the bottom and you feel like you have to keep dumping stuff in to keep it full. Mm -hmm. Um, that's, it's just such a lie in business. You don't have to do business that way. Yeah. Yeah. I think, uh, even to kind of add on to this, like, well, like, man, this client, they have a lot of money and it's like, and it's a pretty big brand. I, I, I probably should take them on as a client and like through that whole process of them not valuing you by the time you deliver the final project, you're frustrated. You you resent them because they didn't value you. You didn't get paid enough. You did all this. Extra. And then they're not happy either. They're, they don't yeah. feel great about this whole thing. So they don't refer you and 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 they're just annoyed. So they're like yeah. the debit credit thing like that totally plays into that because what would what would be the best is if you're working with somebody that you totally align with. You do a great job. Everybody enjoys the experience. Mm-hmm. And then they tell somebody else they become your marketing mm-hmm. for you versus like spending all this time and energy with a client that's not a great fit. And then at the end of the day, everybody's ticked off and nobody's referring to anybody either. Everybody's talking bad about everybody. And it's just like, oh, this is a, this is a mess. And uh, you can so. feel like the work that you get excited about, right? It, it feels different. And yeah, it, it, you can get stuck in that trap of thinking that if you let this client go, that then there's your money, right? And it's right. it's definitely totally. a scary, like scarcity mindset kind of trap. And unfortunately, it just sucks so many businesses in to where then they can't break free to get and work with other clients because this client that they don't yep. really like is taking up all their time and energy. Um, yep. And so it's, you, you know, you went in business for yourself for a reason and value that, like value yourself totally. um, and value your work and make sure that whomever you're working with, it's like a mutual respect kind of thing. It's not always sunshine and rainbows, of course, in business, but 
definitely it can be something that does feel good at the end of the day. And, um, you know, those gut checks will always let you know the right people to do business with. And I preface that with saying a way of checking that. And, and one of the biggest tips I always say to creators is to ask a crap ton of questions at the beginning and do like your due diligence on a discovery to find out if they are the right fit. So you can identify it quickly before you get too deep into it. And, mm -hmm. and then not only will this help you know if they're the right people for you, but it also helps you know what you can really do for them instead of just being like the order taker of, hey, you want a video and I'm gonna show up and do it. It's, oh, this is your vision, this is your goals. Like I could see us doing this together and um, really being the visionary and, and collaborator with them and working along as a partner versus just a service provider, right? Um, and, and that makes clients become the advocates because they feel like mm -hmm. you have some stake in the game. Totally. Yes, a million percent. Man, you're really good at this. I don't, I don't, I, yes. Yeah. Um, hmm. That's so good. You know, the one, one thing I wanted to comment on is you'd said two things that made me uh, think this. You first mentioned the bullhorn, mm -hmm. and then you said, uh, you know, you got to, like, blast your message out there. And I, I, I read something a few years ago. Somebody said, like, don't call them email blasts, right? Because that's like, you know, it's like the bullhorn bullhorn mm -hmm. effect like if you know who you're trying to serve the emails that you're sending out should actually be very helpful mm -hmm. and add value to those people so it's not a blast it's not bullhorn you're not just like mm -hmm. in but we say it even like some people on my team will be like yeah just blast it I'm, I'm always like cringing Ooh, i'm like no, yeah. no 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 we're not gonna blast anything we're, <laughs> we're, we're gonna send an email and hopefully it's gonna add a ton of value because we know who we're trying to send it to and, and speak mm -hmm. to but i think that just speaks to the importance of knowing who your ideal client is knowing mm -hmm. what niche you you want to serve and i'm doing a five-day challenge right now and that's kind of one of the that was day number two was uh nail your niche and it's just so and you said this at the beginning too i'm like man are you I, have you been following along the challenge that, that i've been hosting <laughs> but if you if you know your niche you know who you want to serve and it's and it's specific then you can really figure out like what are the problems what do they wake up every morning with mm -hmm. the problem it's not like yeah. their problem isn't like oh i need I need Ryan to make a video for us. Their problem is like, we need more sales or we need more conversions or we need more opportunities or we need to hire more employees. Like, you know, like those are the real problems and that people are pulling their hair out. Like, how am I gonna do this? And it's like, well, guess what? Did you know that video can actually help you get more sales while you sleep? Or, mm -hmm. you know, video can help paint a picture of who your culture really is so that you can hire the kind of people that are drawn to your culture and you can do that while you sleep. You know, all these... All, that's, that. that's a great thing about videos like you know while you're sleeping but that's it it's there's a fear that's like well i can't i can't niche down too far because i'm not gonna you know get enough clients and because i think it's I the way people are thinking about niches like they're thinking oh i have to go manufacturing or whatever and it doesn't have to be the niche the niche could be the type of customer that you want to work with so me for example i want to yes. work with clients that care about they're people, right? They, they believe in relationship marketing. They want to do business the right way. And so they're people that get the power of showing up and doing good business, right? They, they understand that, um, you know, it's the customer that's going to stick with them longer is their current customer. And so they need to have more customer delight, you know, things in place and growing and building a sustainable long-term business. It could be, you know, you value and you want to niche with the people that are telling those stories, you know, um, that are really into storytelling, whatever, but you don't have to think of a niche, like a super narrow, like specific type of person. It can still be a mindset thing versus yeah. a type of industry or you know i yep. say that all the time to people that are in the speaking circuit and they're like oh we got to find a niche for our speaking and so they'll go with a platform and you know the people that went with google plus like forever ago they're like oh no now what right or vine or whatever it is i mean go in with a thought process instead of a platform right the technique not the tool you know or the industry and and this aligns with what you were saying a minute ago about the email blast, right? I think it still goes back to that scarcity mindset that we have to go so wide that then we don't have any roots. Like 
you know, it's it's just right. it's very easy to Good. you know for for things to not stick and be rooted in something instead of going deeper. Like go deep with with your community, go deep with what you're wanting to do, and that's going to have the you know the ripple effect again versus just trying to spread yourself so wide. Like just mm-hmm. drill down in and, and really get some roots into the communities, the people, the um you know the the community that you want to connect with and the ways to do that really is like personalization is big like knowing your audience like you said so you can be specific in how you're showing up to serve them so like for example i do a tuesday show live show um called magnet marketers that's focused on relationship marketing tactics right and and that's the community and the email that i'm sending because i know those the community cares about that kind of stuff but then if i'm doing one-off communications too like personalizing that message a little bit, whether that's the topic to the audience that it's going to resonate with to add more value, or if you're just sending, you know, a video email to someone and say, Hey, thank you so much for your time. Um, in our consults, you know, here's the things I heard that you care about, whether it's an audio message, you know, something that's going to add more of that human element to it, Mm -hmm. that people are going to say, Oh, wow, he took a little, or she took a little bit extra time to show that they care. And that's the thing that's going to be remembered. That's the thing that's gonna um, you know, create that rapport a lot faster and, and deepen that relationship so someone does wanna choose you. It's just like little small things that we can do if we focus just on even doing one, you know, one thing different, uh, whether it's how you follow up um, or sending a card after somebody hires you or just something little to show a little extra delight and take the pause and focus on going, like I said, deeper, you would have so much more of, um, you know, so much more growth and, and referrals in than blasting an email <laughs> message out that people are going to open. I love that. That's so good, man. Lots of good stuff here. Uh, we're running out of time, but I definitely wanted us uh, to, to touch. I wanted you to touch on this, uh, this thing that you, you teach on how to get repeat referral work. <laughs> I mean, I think everybody that's listening is like, oh, is there, is there a magic bullet? Please tell us if so. And yeah, so timer starts now. Yeah, absolutely. So it's relationship marketing is what it's called. And I do have those guides that I was telling you about. So the care workbook and the watch, um, watch guide on there as well at learn relationship marketing.com. It's free. I'm not going to spam you. I promise I can grab workbook and go. Um, but what it focuses in on is again, starting from the inside out. So it's identifying your brand manifesto, identifying then your, your culture from that. So what is your message? You know, how are you going to articulate it? Um, and then your ideal audience or personas, avatars, whatever you want to call them, who you are there to serve and who you are there not to serve, like make a negative Mm -hmm. persona. Like I have one, that company that we were talking about that I, you know, the wrong company that has all the money that uh, you think is going to be great at the beginning. Like that's in my negative persona box now. So I identify that quickly. Um, Then from there, now you know who, who you're there to serve. So now you know what channels that you should show up on. So you're not trying to spread yourself too thin because you're going where your community is hanging out. Um, yeah. you're, you know, where they're, what they're listening, what they're watching, um, what they're into. Right. And so then you can show up where they are with the message to articulate that's going to resonate with that community and then focus on serving them more. Um, so what can you add a value for free that somebody would be willing to pay for? Right. And then yeah. now that you know your people, how you're going to show up with your, your message, then it goes to who already has this trusted built in audience with a similar community. And I call those people the activators. So um, like, for example, like you, Ryan, you get relationship marketing. We're collaborating right now on your show, talking with your community that trust you, I'm sure. And now I'm being introduced to them. And if they're following you and you are this kind of person that shows up this way, then chances are it's a very related community, right? So there's gonna be some collaboration, I'm sure, and and crossover there. So find out what activators that you can have and and tap into where you can still provide value. You're not calling them up and asking for some sales, but provide value to them to where it's gonna expand your, your reach. Then from there, look at the experience factor. So how can I show up in a way that's going to add little levels of delight, those deepening the rapport. So I do this by writing out like literally the sales process from somebody following and just, or finding us, you know, searching for the problem that they have or to reach a goal and write out like, where are they going? What are they searching? How do they get to our website? What questions would they have when they get there? What does the journey look like? 
Once they become a customer, then what does the steps look like? And look at where can I reduce friction and add delight? Mm -hmm. So it's like, where can I streamline any of the processes um, that are on the site? Where can I make it easier for them to, to do business with us? And then easier for them to continue doing business with us ongoing. And when you map that out, um, I, I promise you, you're going to grow repeat referral business. I know that's a lot shared in a couple minutes. Um, so your guide is there with examples at learnrelationshipmarketing.com. But we've done this for all kinds of industries. And I work with some very niche and some would consider boring industries like nuclear pharmacy and Mr. Manhole that literally has a tool that just cuts holes in the ground and replaces manholes. Like, not that sexy, right? But, um, right. but it works. Um, so, mm -hmm. so yeah, I, I, there's some examples in there. I love that. That's really good. And I mean, I, I agree. I, I feel like, you know, that system that you have, it's so good. And there are definitely elements in that, that we practice our, our studio practices and have when, when we do it and we do it well, mm -hmm. the, the return on that investment is massive. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we've sent cards or video emails or follow-ups or, you know, just surprise people with, uh, with a small gift or any, like even like contractors that work with us on occasion, like sending them like a $20 Starbucks, like they're like, Oh my gosh, are you serious? It's like, this is, uh -huh. it's like, yeah. yeah, it wasn't that, but it was, wow, that was a brainstorm. That was really simple. And, uh, you know, how far that goes is amazing. Um, so true. Yeah, that's really rich. I hope I hope people can can take take those things to, things to heart. And you said where, where can people download that at? Yeah, you can go to learnrelationshipmarketing.com or my personal website jessicaphillips.com. And uh YouTube, you said you you've got a show where where should people kind of look for you on the social media uh or anywhere else in the world? Wherever you're hanging out. Um just <laughs> you, know, you can find me on any of the socials, uh Jessica Phillips. Um or jessicaphillips.com and it's live streamed to all the social channels, um, YouTube, Facebook, uh, Periscope, um, LinkedIn, Facebook, all, all of the, all the places <laughs> and recapped on our this blog. Not, yeah. That's amazing. And this is how bad I am. I, what Periscope is that? Twitter. Is that a Twitter mm -hmm. thing? Yeah. I don't, I'm so <laughs> out of it. It's okay. I, I think they're going to be changing it anyway. So you're good. You're not going to miss anything. Okay. All right. I am still on uh, Google plus though. That's rocking and rolling. <laughs> yeah, no, maybe not. Jessica, this has been so good. Seriously. Um, I, I love what you're about. This is great. Um, thank you for sharing all of this. Uh, how would you like to leave us today? No, I just want to encourage all of you that just keep showing up, doing amazing work, and just focus on out carrying the competition, and you'll be just fine. But thank you so much for letting me chat with you here. I feel super energized now as as well, talking and nerding out on relationship marketing. So I appreciate you. I love it. All right, I hope you enjoyed this episode. My question to you is, what are you going to do? What's the one thing, the one idea, the thought that you were inspired by thinking like, hmm, I should try that. I should do I should do that. I would love to know if you want to share that with me, please do. But for yourself, write it down and commit to it. Throw it on a sticky note. Throw it on your laptop monitor or something like that. Something fun and new that we're doing. I'm always doing fun and new things. Uh, I'm, I'm going to be doing a series of live interviews uh, with other videographers. And we're going to be covering topics like live streaming, uh, how to build your business as a solopreneur, how to build your business as a... A uh, multipreneur. How do you say that? Like a, a regularpreneur, <laughs> like having employees and stuff like that. Where do you start? Uh, how to charge what you're worth? If any of this sounds interesting, I'm gonna I'm gonna have guests on. You're gonna have opportunity to be able to meet people. Uh, you're gonna be able to ask questions and engage and build community. Here's how you're gonna be able to do that. You have to go to studiosherpas.com slash live l i v e or live. However you say that word. Sometimes I say it both ways because that's that's it's you know it's worded both ways anyway studiosherpas.com slash live and sign up there and you'll get notified when we do a new when we schedule it and when we do it so that you are 
in the know and you can hop on those. Uh, we'll probably have some kind of a form or something where you can submit questions beforehand that we can kind of call through and pick some of the best ones that we can ask on the show. Uh, and I might even bring on some other guests outside of videographers and video studio, video studio owners. Uh, we'll just kind of see how it goes, but this is an experiment. We're going to try it. We're going to see how it goes. I think it could be really cool. It could be fun for our guests and we'll probably repurpose some of that content for the podcast itself. But to give you that like, you know, behind the scenes or behind the curtain opportunity to be able to, you know, see us while we're doing the show and to be able to ask some questions too. Uh, Cause you know, sometimes my questions aren't the best. Just kidding. My questions are always good. What are you talking about? Uh, I'm just teasing. Uh, the other thing that I want to let you know before you go, I still got you in your ears. Thank you for hanging out. Um, this fall, we are doing the Onward Summit, okay? So I'm gonna be talking about it. You're gonna be hearing more and more about it, but here's what's gonna happen. We are gonna sell out of this event. I promise you, we're, I, I think we're, we're limiting it to, it's either 40 or 50 attendees. We already have uh, a dozen people who have secured their seats. These are people who have sec secured their seats a while ago. We closed the doors because we didn't know what was happening and all that stuff. Now we know what's happening, so we're going to open the doors soon. So you need to get on the wait list if this is something that you're interested in. And the way to do that is to go to studiosherpas.com slash onward because it is the Onward Summit. And it's going to be held here not here. I'm in my home studio. It's going to be held at our studio in Lake Orion, Michigan, which is about 45 minutes north of Detroit. So you'll fly in to the Detroit Metro Airport or the Flint Metro Airport, uh, both actually very close to the studio. And we're going to hang out for a few days. You're going to meet a lot of other awesome people. And the reason why I'm doing this event is because I loved meeting a bunch of you people and uh, you loved meeting a bunch of you people. Uh, we're going to have some speakers. We're going to, I'm going to be a speaker. Uh, you're going to have opportunity to network and ask hard questions and be encouraged by other people that you meet, their stories, their, their, their wins, their successes, their failures. And we're going to learn together. We're going to grow together. It's going to be incredible. So go sign up to get notified at studiosherpas.com slash onward. That's all the promoting and selling I'm doing today. <laughs> Uh, but really my heart is for you. I want you to succeed in this work. As long as I'm doing this work, I want to be able to speak what's working for us and share my journey. One quick story before we go, I'm going on vacation here soon. And for three weeks, I've never gone on vacation for three weeks in a row. What, well, like three days of that is like a work vacation. Um, but it's, it will be with friends and it will be amazing. Uh, so I'm doing that. I'm able to do that in my business because I've built it in a way that I'm not the bottleneck. While I'm gone, we will be booking new jobs. We will be collecting money. We will be making money. We will be delivering projects and I won't be doing any of that work. It's because I built my business so that I can be a business owner versus the business owning me. And I want that same thing for you. If that's something that you desire, if that's not what you want, then okay, whatever. But there are things, even if that's not what you want, there are ways that you can work smarter, not harder. You can be more efficient in your business, which should turn to profitability and all of those things. I just say that, you know, after I get back from vacation, we can, you can ask me how the heck did it go, Ryan? And I'll be like, oh my gosh, it was the worst thing ever. Or it was like, no, this actually, this worked. Uh, so this is an experiment for me. I'm trying it. I'm going to do it. Let's see how it goes. And, uh, and I, I just wanted to share that with you so that, uh, you can be encouraged and say, okay, like if I did want to, you know, have a business that was like that, if Ryan has done it, I think maybe I could do it too. And so that's my encouragement for you. Uh, but again, well, you know, ask me after the fact. Uh, I am doing it. Uh, but you know, if you would asked me ten years ago, I'd have been like, I, I can't, I can't leave for three weeks. What are you talking about? Like, you know, my team's going to need me. I'm hoping that I've got my podcast lined up, emails lined up, scheduled, all of that stuff. And my team, they're just gonna, they're gonna rock it. It's gonna be awesome. So anyway, that's all I've got for today. Thank you for hanging out. Uh, onward and up my up, <laughs> upward, my friend. Uh, I'll talk to you real soon. Thanks for hanging out. Adios for now. Bye.